I hope you can hear this over the piano. I can certainly hear it. That's great. Okay. I don't know if you know this. Cap's actual birthday is, is March 22nd, and that's the same day as the birthday of Stephen Sondheim, Andrew Lloyd Webber, and Richard Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you ast astrologers will have fun with that one. Anyway. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, okay, I guess, yeah, I guess I can see over this. That's fine. So I, uh, Bob Austin would call me to see if I would dig out some of the, exhume some of the old uh, math songs from the old, old days. So I came up with four and one more recent one. Uh, the, um, I first intersected with Cap in the summer of 1943. Uh, I took two courses from him at Harvard. Uh, he was then, let's see, he's, it, was so 40, so it was 54 years ago, so he would have been 26, and I was four. <laughs> and, and one of them was, uh, was uh, algebra, which, as I recall, I may be wrong, but, but I don't think you could call it algebra then because that was like a high school subject, like civics, but they called it higher algebra, or in the case of Burkhoff and McLean, modern algebra. So <laughs> I think now they have uh, postmodern algebra, I think, but I haven't, <laughs> I haven't kept up with that. So anyway, that, that didn't lead to any songs. Uh, for one thing, n nothing rhymes with algebra, does it? Is there anything that rhymes with algebra? I've never been able to find one, but that's a challenge. <laughs> Think about that tonight. Um, but the other one was freshman calculus, and that did lead to a song, which is here somewhere. <laughs> it, it was set to a tune which, fortuitously enough, is this is a definition of the derivative, and the tune, fortuitously enough, is called There'll Be Some Changes Made, 1923. You take a function of x and you call it y. Take any x naught that you care to try. You make a little change and call it delta x. The corresponding change in y is what you find next. And then you take the quotient and now carefully send delta x to zero and I think you'll see that what the limit gives us if our work all checks is what we call dy dx. It's just dy dx. Okay, so yeah. it all wasn't worth it. Then, a little, little later, we got more sophisticated and got into deltas and epsilons. And so here's a, that prompted another song. Called there's a delta for is this yeah well it varies a lot when I move my head but what should I do Could sing like that uh, yeah. um, all right I'll try and keep my head down uh, this is called there's a delta for every epsilon it's a political song. <laughs> There's a delta for every epsilon. It's a fact that you can always count upon. There's a delta for every epsilon. And now and again, there's also an N. But one condition I must give, the epsilon must be positive. A lonely life all the others live. In no theorem, a delta for them. How sad, how cruel, how tragic, how pitiful and other adjectives that I might mention. The matter merits our attention. If an epsilon is a hero, just because he is greater than zero, it must be mighty discouraging to lie to the left of the origin. Ah, uh, this rank discrimination is not for us. We must fight for an enlightened calculus where epsilons, all both minus and plus, have deltas to call their own. Okay. <laughs> then, uh, yeah, a bunch of us at uh, Harvard, when I was a graduate student, did a show called The Physical Review. It was supposed to be the last class of an elementary physics lecture, and the professor played himself. I changed the words a little bit to fit uh, mathematics, not much. The, um, I suppose nowadays, when people think of Harvard and mathematics, they naturally think of Ted Kaczynski. <laughs> but in those days... <coughs> Okay, this tune for this, if there's any non-Gilbert and Sullivan buffs here, the tune is uh, King Gama's song from Princess Ida by Gilbert and Sullivan. <laughs> it 
If you give me your attention, I will tell you what I am. I'm a brilliant mathematician, also something of a ham. I've tried for numerous degrees. In fact, I've one of each. Of course, that makes me eminently qualified to teach. I understand the subject matter thoroughly, it's true. And I can't see why it isn't all as obvious to you. Each lecture is a masterpiece, meticulously planned. Yet everybody tells me that I'm hard to understand, and I can't think why. My diagrams are models of true art, you must agree. And my handwriting is famous for its legibility. Take a word like, I got to do this, minimum. It's always one of my favorite words <laughs> to write on the blackboard. Uh, Uh, problem, find the Fourier series. <laughs> uh, okay, where was I? Take a word like minimum to choose a random word. For anyone to say he cannot read that is absurd. The anecdotes I tell get more amusing every year. Though frankly, what they go to prove is sometimes less than clear. And all my explanations are quite lucid, I am sure. Yet everybody tells me that my lectures are obscure and I can't think why. For example, take differentiation, it's as simple as can be. Like finding the derivative of tangent x, let's see. It's uh, tangent squared, no, 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 secant squared. No, no, it's just secant, I'll bet. The sign in front is plus, or is it minus, I forget. Well, it does have a derivative, of that there is no doubt. All these formulas are trivial if you only think them out. Yet students tell me I have memorized the whole term through. Everything you've taught us but the problems I can't do, and I can't think why. He can't think why. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the next one? Oh, yeah. The... Um, well, for nine years, I taught in the political science department at MIT, believe it or not, teaching the quantitative courses. Uh, those were the days of mathematical models and statistics. Those were the days, uh, I think it still is true, when social science was trying very hard to justify the word science. Uh, one of the ways you do that is by introducing jargon, which nobody can understand. You know, if this young man expresses himself in terms too deep for me, then what a singularly deep young man this deep young man must be. And the other is to use mathematics. And uh, that's what they were trying to do. And I think there's still people who are laboring under this delusion in social sciences. Anyway, uh, that you can make it into a, a science. However, um, so I wrote this song, it's a parody uh, called Sociology. Now, uh, MIT did not have a sociology department. They hadn't sunk that low. <laughs> but they, um, sociology was included in political science. And that was a better uh, title for a song. So uh, this is a song about that phenomenon of trying to mathematize social science. It's called Sociology. The tune is a song called Choreography, which was sung by Danny Kaye in a movie called White Christmas by Irving Berlin. <laughs> Strange is the change they are trying to arrange today in sociology fanatics in their attics are learning mathematics just for sociology persuasion by equation they all feel is much more satisfactory they in an ivory steeple far away from all people they do research in sociology guys who wrote lies now present them in disguise, a cinch in sociology. Attract, quite abstract, without one single fact, is blended sociology. Birds, who used words, now all talk in terms of X and Y and Z. They can take one small matrix and really do great tricks, all in the name of sociology. Joes, who wrote prose, now write algebra. Who knows? It may be sociology. There, everywhere, 
full of sigma and chi-square and full of sociology. They consult, sounding occult, talking like a mathematics PhD. They can snow all their clients by calling it science, although it's only sociology. Okay, now what else do I have? Uh, one more here, I found in the files. Oh, this is a fairly recent one, actually. Um, a number of years ago, the Children's Television, wor Television Workshop decided to have a program to teach math to little kids, and it was going to be called That's Mathematics, and I wrote a song for it. They changed the title, however, to Square One TV, and they didn't use the song. <laughs> so uh, it went back in the trunk, and then uh, 1993, for the Fermat Bacchanal here, they, uh, Bob called me and I said, do you have anything? And I dug this song out. And uh, they wouldn't allow us to use the tune, which was to the song called That's Entertainment by Arth uh, Arthur Schwartz and Howard Beats. So I had to write another tune. And I also added a little verse about Andrew Wiles to make it appropriate. <laughs> called That's Mathematics. <laughs> and it's for little kids, remember, except for the Andrew Wiles part. Counting sheep when you're trying to sleep being fair when there's something to share being neat when you're folding a sheet that's mathematics when a ball bounces off of a wall when you cook from a recipe book when you know how much money you owe that's mathematics how much gold can you hold in an elephant's ear when it's noon on the moon then what time is it here if you could count for a year would you get to infinity or somewhere in that vicinity oh and you choose how much postage to use when you know what's the chance it will snow when you bet and you end up in debt. Oh, try as you may, you just can't get away from mathematics. Andrew Wiles gently smiles, does his thing, and voila, QED, we agree, and we all shout hurrah. As he confirms what Fermat jotted down in that margin, which could have used some enlarging. Tap your feet. Keeping time to the beat of a song While you're singing along Harmonize with the rest of the guys Yes, try as you may You just can't get away from mathematics Thank you. <laughs>